Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Here's a story from my youth. Quite long so I apologize for that, but it's an occurrence I feel that you all would find interesting. I grew up poor. A trailer park in northeast Texas, the Piney Woods region. By trailer park I mean this place was basically woods with a shantytown of trailers and sheet metal homes. Most of my dad's family lived here, two of his three brothers and his parents. My mom's family lived in Shreveport, Louisiana, but we never visited them much. My parents weren't like most people there, they married before they had me, and became parents at age 25 instead of the average of 16 in our trailer park. They lived there for two reasons, one being my father was an alcoholic who wasted away jobs and money, and the other being that we took care of my grandparents. I went to school, and quite enjoyed being there, partly due to me wanting to escape what I experienced in the lake lot as I called it, since it was situated near the shore of a reservoir. I can tell you that the only way to get out of that place is through sports, with minor exceptions. I gained a cross-country scholarship to go a college in New England, and I escaped the cycle that had consumed my father's family for years. So that's basically the context for this story. The uplifting story kind of ends there. The death of my uncle reminded me of an old curse my family would talk about, not a curse on us specifically, but about the lake lot. The story exists in multiple instances, I'll tell each story in its own green text to make it more coherent. The first story is the events that happened before my time, these are what I grew up listening to and aren't as interesting as the personal stories, but bear with me. In the lake lot there's a lot of abandoned trailers. People come in with their trailer, shack up for a month or two to escape lovers, parents, or just get high for a while. When they leave, they often dump the trailers, they're mostly cheap prowlers or pop-ups that only run a couple of grand. Half of the trailers at the lot are either run-down seasonal homes, or abandoned trailers. The permanent residents often make sheet metal add-ons to the trailers to make them like home, East Texas engineering for you. Anyways, there was this one trailer, an old red prowler, that just kind of popped up on year. No one knew who brought it in, but they never saw anyone leave, but the lights would be on most likely a meth junkie so people left it alone. After about three years, the trailer was run down and the park, handyman, went down to see what was up since the lights would still be on at night. He went down there, knocked on the door, and apparently no one answered. The handyman, Mr. Crokey, left and that was that except the next morning his neighbors found him with his throat slit. Now there's violence at the park, but aside from abusive parents, exes, and the occasional junkie fight that results in a death, not much violence takes place. Eventually people attributed it to whatever was in that trailer. A band of three or four guys went down there and broke in when no one answered, what they found, I do not know. Rumors range from bodies, to voodoo books, to an old witch. The men wouldn't say but they drove to the police office to report whatever they saw, it must have been important. They died in a brutal car crash on the way there, hit a gator basking on the road and the truck they were in slid into a tree, two men flew out the front windshield and the third smashed his skull against the dashboard. After that everyone in the lot stayed away from the trailer. It gained legendary status and no one messed with it except for dumb kids who would only go up and poke it or toss a rock. Adults never went near it, and told everyone it was haunted and an old man lived inside who would eat you if you got too close. That's what I knew growing up. This story along with other little legends, up to this point it's not out of the ordinary in my opinion, but the summer of 2006, when I first remember events pertaining to the trailer, I realized it was quite different. 2006. My cousin, Shelda, and I were playing outside, hide and go seek or something. 
We never went far, but the dense woods and empty trailers made for many good hiding spots. My favorite was an old hollow tree trunk, if you looked out the back you could see the prowler. What we referred to the haunted trailer as since that's what company made it. The prowler was about 40 yards behind my trailer, across one road, one trailer, and some woods. While we were playing, I saw a man enter the trailer, a young guy in his 20s in a black hoodie and jeans. I didn't recognize him. This was odd because I was that annoying kid who always started convos with people, and since my dad was always passed out drunk and my mom was working at the grocery store 30 minutes away, I talked with anyone I could find once I came home from school. My cousin found me in my usual spot, and noticed I was looking off at the prowler. She asked what was going on, I explained, and we both crouched and watched what would happen. The man opened the door, it wasn't locked, and nothing else happened for about a minute. Then we heard a gunshot. Being in Texas we were used to the sound of it, especially in our hick trailer park where drunk people often fired off a round of excitement or two. But one of the windows broke. We knew it came from inside, and after a few more minutes the man who entered never came out. We told our parents, they were mad for us even looking at the prowler. They called the police, none of the neighbors would dare check it out. Police came. Yellow tape. More cars. Ambulance. They came over to my grandma, the neighborhood watchman of the lot, and mumbled to her for a bit. Later I found out the dude walked into the trailer, sat down crisscross on the floor, and blew his brains out with a shotgun. They didn't remove the trailer for some reason. Cops kind of hate us, we're trailer trash that clog up their weekend nights with domestic violence and drunk antics, and many ex-cons live here. No one knew the man who killed him, blew off any dental records he had and had no id on him, fingerprints weren't on file either, we don't keep track of people here unless they go to jail there were rumors of course. The man went there to sacrifice himself to some cult god. He was a junkie who simply snapped. His lover, parent, family member owned the prowler at one point. Either way it only reinforced the taboo around the prowler. Story 2. This event took place about two months after the first one, in the fall of 2006 one day I came home from school. Mom was at work, dad was god knows where. Get inside our trailer, turn on the TV and start doing my homework. Fucking nerd.mp3. Dad comes home about 30 minutes later, drunk as hell. I can tell he's in a violent mood. Hard liquor makes him pass out but too many beers and he likes to see how strong he is. He staggers towards me and I run outside, maybe this is where my cross-country skills first developed. I run to a spot on the lakeshore that I always go to, through dense woods so my dad can't catch me, then I come home an hour later and he'll be passed out. The prowler happens to be near the trail I take to get to the water. On my way back I notice something. There's noise coming from the trailer. Like a TV is on fairly high volume. I can't make out any words, but the noise is obvious. I keep my distance. I wait about 20 yards away and slowly make it back towards my trailer. The buzz from the trailer gets louder, turns into a static noise. The static gets very loud, like a tree full of cicadas in the summer. I'm mortified, and stumble backwards. Suddenly the windows of the prowler shatter, except for the one that was blown out obviously. Right after they all shatter, the noise stops. Silence. I stand up and run back to my trailer and never tell anyone. But that event scared me for life, and I never even looked at the prowler for about a year. Flash forward to 2008, my friend, Wyatt, and I are playing with a few other trailer park kids, probably nine of us in total. What's important to keep in mind is that one of the boys was notorious for killing animals and scaring us by leaving the carcasses on our porches. He was two years older than us and went to jail basically right when he turned 18. We were playing manhunt. Really just chasing each other around, no rules basically. 
It was fun, our after school routine when it was nice. I'm following Wyatt around, he was a year older than me and knew the park much better. I was fast, we were the perfect combo. When someone saw us, Wyatt would run, and I would try to distract who was chasing us. I'd let them get close then outrun them, and eventually track down Wyatt. So, this exact thing happened, and once I escaped this kid, I went looking for Wyatt. We had set places to meet up, so it made it easier. Based on my location I figured Wyatt would be by his Nana's trailer. About halfway there I see a dead raccoon pinned to a tree. Its insides are torn out and are assembled in a neat pile on the ground. This isn't normal work for the kid who killed animals, Lucas, but I wouldn't put it past him. I'm currently majoring in environmental science, so ever since I was a kid this stuff just made. Me sick, I was one of the few kids there who cared about animals. Anyways, I run away in a pretty sour mood, and when I see Wyatt on the porch of his nanas, something is up. She's out there with him, he's on her lap, when he sees me, he runs and says, did you see it? I say yeah, and I feel bad for that poor raccoon. He gives me a puzzled look, and then says, no I meant the boar. We look at each other confused, and his nana comes down and talks to us. We tell her what we saw and then another kid comes running down the street. He's one of the younger ones, and is crying and whimpering, Lucas. Wyatt's nana knew about this kid, and we all thought we knew what was up. The younger kid found a mutilated raccoon in his hiding spot apparently, so we all went to find Lucas. Lucas was walking around looking for kids to tag, and when we found him Wyatt's nana yelled about the animals. Lucas denied it, which is strange. He always admits it, he thinks it's cool to kill the animals, manly even. But he says he didn't do it. Tells us he can prove it. Takes all of us, Nana included, to a tree in the woods. Now how would I have done that? Lucas points to a deer carcass, 15 feet or so up in the tree. Its head is gone. The blood is still dripping down, it must be relatively fresh. We all are at a loss of words, even Wyatt's Nana was in shock. Now you should see the head, whatever guy lives in that old trailer took out the eyes and mounted the head on a stake in his yard. Lucas was new, he didn't know about the prowler besides the fact that we don't mess with it. Wyatt's Nana almost faints, and yells in such a manner that even Lucas listens, and tells us all to go home and to never go near the trailer. Later that night my mom asks what happened, I tell her, and she seems scared. It shouldn't be this active. What? She realized she said too much. She said the animals, they got themselves into trouble. My mother was a smart and kind woman, but not a good liar, I knew it was false. But I didn't push it, part of me wanted to never know what she meant. I still don't, at least not completely. We stopped manhunt for a while. An activity related to the prowler stopped for a while, maybe whatever it was that killed the animals realized it had been too active, people noticed. I wish it stopped forever. I won't green text this next one, but these are few things that didn't happen to me directly, but gave my family more reason to claim that the lot was cursed. Some involve my uncles being incredibly intoxicated, so the credibility is questionable on a few stories. During 2008, my uncle was addicted to meth, he would frequently leave the park for days at a time and wander back in and sleep off the high for a few days. Apparently one night he wandered around the prowler, and claimed he saw a banshee-like figure floating inside of it. Of course, none of us believed it, and I don't think any of you should either, but what did actually happen was that there was a very loud shriek, it sounded like gears grinding on a car but an octave or two higher. My other uncle was on the porch of his trailer, sober, and heard this shriek and saw meth head uncle running away from the prowler screaming about some witch. A few other people claimed they heard the shriek, and some even said they saw the prowler glow from the inside. My uncle overdosed about one month after this incident, adamant that a witch was haunting him, 
he didn't die, but after a month-long hospital stay he entered rehab. He still lives at the lot, still does meth, but doesn't talk about the incident anymore. In 2011, my older cousin, 21 at the time, was hanging out with his girlfriend at my grandparents' trailer. They were both drunk, and she talked him into showing her the prowler. They didn't go in, apparently weird noises scared them away after getting quite close, and both were spooked for the rest of the night. Two days later my cousin's girlfriend killed herself, he said he couldn't find any explanation, he blamed himself, he thought the prowler was responsible. Aside from these two instances, most family experiences related to having bad luck if you got too close to the prowler, or, angered, it I guess by throwing rocks at it as my uncle once did. The bad luck wasn't too major, broken bones, miscarriages, getting fired, stuff you can associate as collateral for being white trash and an alcoholic. I passed this off as an excuse for their dumb decisions, but I'm gradually becoming more and more convinced. Okay this is my last story in regard to the prowler, it happened last year when I visited my mom while I was at a cross-country meet in Austin. I was spending the night at the trailer with my parents. Dad was home, seemed to be sober which was unusual. My mom was on edge. I asked why. Said she's heard noises coming from the prowler recently, but was too afraid to check it out. My dad was as well, and he said he was guarding the house with his ratty AR-15 till the noises stopped. My father wasn't a good shot when drunk, hence the soberness. I was too scared as well, we all felt the power the prowler had. I decided to stay one night instead of two. Should have left then and there. Night falls, catch up with my parents. One of my uncles is in jail again, his third DUI. And one of them was slowly dying, his liver was failing. He recently passed away last month. We don't say it, but I know they want to say that the prowler has cursed us. An argument breaks out around 9.30, my cousin decided to crash his car, and everyone was yelling about what should happen, typical white trash drama. I decide to go for a run, I remember why I decided to go to college so far away. It's barely light out, but I don't mind, I still remember every inch of that place. I see a figure in the road though. I can't make out any clothes, it's just a sleek shadow. I slow down, and yell out, evening, I knew most people here anyways. And if it was a stranger, I was curious as to why they were out here. No response, I stop and stare, something wasn't right. The figure isn't facing me, and I realize the proportions are out of whack. The feet seem to blend into the pavement, they just morph into the street. The arms are way too long, and the back is horribly hunched, it almost looks like it's on all fours. I realized it too late, and as I start to turn around so does the figure. The face is of every animal at once, one second it's a deer, then a snake, then a human every face is blurry and decomposed though. Very hard to describe. The face changed every second or so and seemed to be organically flowing from face to face. The body was black, with no form or substance, just shadow. The figure levitated towards me, and I ran. I heard a shriek, like 1000 kettles whistling at once. I was in flight mode, absolutely flying down the road. I didn't turn back, but a sense of absolute dread told me the creature was close. I saw my parents' trailer, and I knew I was almost there. But the creature peeled off. Stopped following me, I was dumbfounded. I stopped for some reason as well, and watched it glide into the woods. It went towards the prowler, and literally went through the wall like a hologram. Still, the door opened and slammed for some reason. The prowler became illuminated with a soft green light, and then it ceased soon after it started. I was in shock. I went back to the trailer and told my family. They didn't seem that surprised. But they said bad luck had to follow. Nothing really happened though. I left the next day, and tried to convince them to leave. 
They wouldn't, of course. One thing alcohol and drugs hadn't been able to alter was the stubbornness of my family. I just told them to stay safe. I flew back to college a few days later. Lost my suitcase. Maybe that was the bad luck. Maybe it hasn't happened yet. Who knows? But something is up with the prowler, and I don't want to know what it is. Sorry if you guys don't find this one particularly scary, but it's based off a childhood memory. It was hard for a kid like me to fit into the environment where I was raised. My family had its share of rednecks, but it wasn't until we moved in with our grandparents that I realized what white trash really was. They lived in a cheap trailer park down in Arkansas. It's all we could afford. Mom lost her job drinking at work and my grandparents were knee-deep in medical bills. I had no choice but to live with them being that I was only 11 years old at the time. I made no friends and hardly got along with my family so most of my time was spent alone playing games or getting lost in the woods. I'd go out in the forest down the road every weekend and explore every inch of it I could before dark. I found many interesting things like the ruins of an old abandoned construction site and plenty of run-down homes. But my favorite place to go to was always the creek. My mother was working late that night and my grandparents were having an awful fight. I didn't want any part of it, so I grabbed a sandwich, stuffed it in a paper sack and decided I was going to eat lunch on my own today. So, I walked out that door and headed towards my usual spot down by the creek. It wasn't too far, just had to go down the road and it was right behind an old vacant trailer house. People up the street said it was haunted, but I didn't believe it. I always felt safe there. I'd walk up to its porch and peer through the window and see if anything were inside. It was always empty. Until today that is. I looked inside the window on the balcony that overlooked the creek. In the far corner of the room was an old wheelchair facing the wall and some broken glass on the floor. None of the windows had been broken and the chair didn't look like any wheelchair I'd ever seen. Being the kid, I was I just assumed someone broke in, smashed a bottle and left their wheelchair. I didn't give it much thought and decided to just head down to the creek. There were frogs to be caught and a sandwich to be eaten. I ate my lunch right away and set off deeper into the woods by the creek. I was going to go as far as my legs could take me. Deeper and deeper into the forest the trees started getting thicker and taller until they almost blotted out the sky. The ground was covered in pine needles and decaying leaves. I kept going and going until I saw a light between the trees, like something out of a Disney movie. A beam of light shone through the thick canopy, revealing a soft, mossy patch of grass. I was exhausted. I'd walked for hours and feeling the warmth of the sun's rays made me feel comfortable. Stomach full and legs aching, my young body could take no more and I had lain down on that soft patch of earth. I listened to the sound of the water from the creek nearby and to the birds chirping above the trees. Before I knew it, I had fallen asleep. Maybe I was just a dumb kid. I didn't think anything could go wrong if I took a quick nap outside deep in those woods. But boy was I wrong. I hadn't gotten much sleep the night before. I slept in the laundry room sharing a bunk bed with my older brother. It wasn't comfortable in the least bit and the room was always cold. My brother kept me up all night watching a Dragon Ball Z marathon that went on all day and night. I'm a very light sleeper so any sudden noise can completely ruin my sleep and let me tell ya. Dragon Ball Z is very noisy. It's no wonder I fell asleep so easily out there. The sound of glass breaking woke me up. I opened my eyes but couldn't move my body. All I could do was look around and see visions of my family sitting on the sofa with huge holes in their chests trying to push back in their viscera. I could see their lungs expanding and their hearts beating through the cavity in their chest. They were completely silent as they moved their lips as if trying to speak. Each one of them staring down at me as they slowly bled to death. 
I couldn't move a muscle or make a sound as I watched them all drop to the floor. I wanted more than anything to run away and cry. I was forced to watch my whole family bleed out right in front of me. Somehow, during all this, a leaf made its way into my mouth. That's when I really started to panic. I sprung up from my sleep and spat the leaf out of my mouth. I realized immediately that I was in deep shit. The sun had gone down and the woods were pitch black. I was all alone in that dark forest. I was terrified. I began crying as I made my way towards the creek by ear. I'm not sure if it was my young mind playing tricks on me, but I swear I was being watched. Eyes watching me, snickering, as I fumbled through the dark. I could see again once I reached the creek, but my legs were aching from all the walking. I couldn't find the energy to run but I had to keep following that goddamn creek. I fell over countless times scraping my knees and cutting my hands on rocks. Every time I felt more and more embarrassed as if people were watching me, making fun of me in the dark. I was too afraid to stop. Hours must have gone by before I finally found the trailer at the end of my road. This was it. The final stretch. I was relieved but I couldn't help shaking the thought of being watched. I always looked behind me but never saw a thing and it only scared me more. I practically crawled up the hill and made my way onto the balcony of the trailer that overlooked the creek. I looked down and saw nothing, but I wasn't scared this time. I was finally out of the woods. I was safe. I sat on that balcony rubbing my sore feet and wiping the tears from my eyes. After I finished cleaning the mud off my hands, I tilted my head back and tried to get some rest before I went home. As I looked up, I saw something at the window in front of me. In that moment all the terror I felt waking up and walking out of those woods returned to me and I had no idea why. My heart began to race. I stood up a bit more to see what was at the window. I knew exactly what it was. It was the old wheelchair from before but pulled up right against the window. I quickly stood up and got a clear view of the room. Eyes were definitely looking back at me from that chair as I finally got a good look at it. The chair had leather straps on the arms and legs and a piss-soaked padding on the seat. I could see even more glass scattered across the floor and footprints going in circles in the far corner of the room. I couldn't seem look away from that wheelchair. Next thing I knew I was sprinting down the road to my house. Never again did I stop by that house or go that deep into those woods. Of course, that never stopped me from finding other scary shit around that trailer park. But that's a story for another time. When I had just turned 18, I would go stay a few nights in an abandoned trailer like Pick Related. Pick Related is not the trailer. I was alone during these events, and at the time my only phone had no camera and could only call and text. I don't care if you believe me, as not even my own family does. Even if you believe me or not, this should be an interesting story. Be me, dumbed 18-year-old who just moved out of mom's house. Moved to house on top of a hill. Nice house, single floor but had a mold problem in the bathroom. The woods nearby were large, and you couldn't see through them. I assume previous owners made the small path that was to the far right of the forest line. First few weeks I would explore the path, and would go deeper each time. I eventually find an abandoned trailer, I don't explore it because I have no weapon in case of an animal attack. I return the next day with combat knife a friend gave to me, and start exploring. It was a standard trailer, small kitchen part with a smashed in refrigerator and cabinets, bathroom with surprisingly clean toilet, and bedroom with a large bed that takes up the entire space, there was a small shelf above the bed. Is important, at first I thought it was pretty cool, and was about to head out before I got the idea to spend the night in the trailer. I go home where my cell phone gets reception, and tell my mom where I'll be for the night. My mom tells me that it was a bad idea and I'll be eaten by coyotes. 
Me being the bright child I am I don't listen to my mom and stay the night anyways. I forgot to mention that the trailer's front door was fucked, completely off the hinges and on the ground in front of the trailer, and that the bedroom also had a door that was still on but was cracked. I bring a sheet and blanket to put on the bed, and some other camping stuff. I do bring a better weapon, a hunting rifle. Don't know the specifics of it, it's not meant for anything bigger than a deer. I didn't get any weird vibes from this trailer and stayed there a few nights, it was only about the tenth night that anything weird started to happen. This particular night was quiet, I just assumed it was because of the fall season because I was a dumb. I set up camp, but my things would go missing when I knew where I had put them and they would show up where I had them once I wasn't looking for them. The objects weren't large, largest object being a can of tuna. That night it took me a while to fall asleep, as normally I had crickets and other bug noises to lullaby me to sleep. I woke up at an unknown time, and I want to specify that I was not suffering from sleep paralysis and I was in full control of my body as I remember moving my hand to scratch my side. When I went to scratch my side I freeze in mid-movement as I see on the shelf a small, grey face staring at me. This thing staring at me has black eyes, grey skin, and slits for nostrils, I couldn't see a mouth. It had its fingers wrapped around the bottom of the shelf, its joints being a weird ball-like shape. I didn't sense any bad intent from this creature, more of a curious aura from it. It just stared at me, not moving. I remember thinking about what to do, whether to run or to attack it. I remember my arm did a tick I had for all my life where it just jerks. As soon as my arm moves the creature pulls back which causes my instincts to kick and I grab my gun and run out. I have a knack for visiting abandoned places, which is why the trailer interested me so much. I might have spent the night in other abandoned places, but the law around there were absolute assholes when it came to abandoned buildings and I didn't want to get caught sleeping. The only other remotely interesting story I have also takes place in an abandoned building, specifically an old mall. I will state that as was probably just someone fucking with me, but they got me good as I never saw them at all but did hear them. Be me. Dumb 25 year old doing some more stupid shit alone. I have no friends willing to explore with me, but one of them tell me about an abandoned mall. I, being the big brain 300 IQ, boy I am decide to go alone, again. Since I'm in public I have no weapons at all, so if a hobo decides to eat my insides I'm fucked. I don't see anyone in the mall, which makes the place even fucking scarier than anything I've seen. The owners of the mall didn't pay for the electricity, because it was nearly pitch black if it wasn't for the skylights in the ceiling. I'll state it now, I fucking hate mannequins with a fucking passion. There's a metric fuckton of mannequins in this mall, this store had mainly clothing stores explaining the large amount of mannequins. I go to the game store first to see if I can raid anything, jack fucking shit everything is gone besides empty game cases and a busted TV. I go to a store that would have DVDs or VHS, all I find there was a VHS copy of Liar Liar the Jim Carrey movie, watch that movie, it's great, but it was snapped in half because dumbs think it's funny to break everything in an abandoned place. It's at this point I decide to go to the food court, everything being the usual stores you'd see. Everything of value is either gone or destroyed, I did find a spatula that I planned to take with me. Spatula in hand I walk around looking at stores, all of which have the glass broken or its insides gutted. I start hearing shuffling, which scares the piss out of me so I start heading towards the entrance I came from because I'm a fucking bitch. I start noticing more shuffling and stomps, which is when the mannequins come in. Something or someone started putting mannequins in the stores I had been in, and over the walking space, how they managed to do it quietly is beyond me. 
This mall is quite large, so it's a lot of ground to cover. More and more fucking mannequins, fucking everywhere. I'm about 20 stores away from the exit and I start hearing running towards me. I kick it into maximum overdrive and dash towards the exit, turning my head once to see behind me. Fucking mannequins, not moving but looking at me running away like a baby back bitch. I get out to my car and drive off, on my drive home I realized I dropped my spatula which pissed me off but I wasn't going back for it. Not all that interesting like my first story, but is still spooky. Some group of friends had a good KEK -E at my expense. A dumb, 8-year-old little ragamuffin boy, with a 13-year-older sis. We are little trailer trash kids, not a mobile trailer park, but a stationary one. There's not much else around here, just the trailer park surrounded in empty fields and bordering a small yet long strip of woods. Not many people live here, though it's kind of big for a trailer park. Me and my sister often have fun by breaking into the abandoned trailers, just to grab free shit the old owners left, to break some things, spray paint on shit. We've been in just about every vacant trailer, but two to three. There is one in pristine condition, just outside the woods, someone moved out of it not even two months ago looks really dang inviting. Squish my fat little self through the window, unlock door for sister. It's game time. PNG. We do the usual thing and scope the place out first. My sister wanders off to the other side of the house. I hear her yell for me bloody murder. Sprint like a madman to wherever the hell my sister is. Master bedroom. As I walk through the doorway just, gore. There is blood smeared on the walls, floors, windows, like, an abnormal amount of blood. Little bit of guts here and there. On top of this dirty ass mattress in the corner of the room is a massive dead stag with a huge cavity in its abdomen, also has its throat slit, one of its legs is broken off and lying next to the bed, one of its antlers looks like they tried to saw it off but gave up. It's fresh. Not a hint of rust. Just red gooey blood with an awful metal stink. Me and my sister haul ass out there, fuck that. Get home and never speak a word of it to anyone else. It's sort of like our little secret. That neighborhood was so damn nice for a trailer park. I have no fucking idea who, why, or what they did with that deer. Me and my sister always talked about how it was probably some scavenger cracker box in the woods. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time.